All right, here we go. Differentiation again, product rule. I say product rule four. It's the same product rule, but notice that, of course, my examples are getting more advanced. So you have to use the product rule in a situation like this. Um, again, my function is a product of two different expressions, so u would be this and v would be this. Just for reference, f of x is u times v, so f prime of x is the first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first, right? Just the same thing that I've been saying. So here we go. It's the first, copy it down, times the derivative of the second, which is 8x minus 10 plus the second, 4x squared minus 10x plus 7 times the derivative of the first, which is 5e to the 5x. Right? Again, if you're not sure how to derive something like this, you have to check my video, Derivatives of Exponential Functions of Base E. All right, let's look at this and see. Do we have anything in common? Unfortunately, as ugly as this thing is, there's nothing really in common between this and this, is there? Even though they both have e to the 5x, this is an e to the 5x plus 3 times that. Okay, my, my GCF has to be something that's being multiplied by everything, so I can't take out an e to the 5x. Nothing in common. The only thing that I see here is this 8x minus 10 both have a 2 in common, so I could take a 2 out from there, bring it to the front. Right, when I took a 2 out of here, I'm left with a 4x minus 5. There's nothing going on here. The only thing that you could do is maybe put this in front, but really, it doesn't matter. It's preference at this point in time. 5e to the 5x, boom. Beautiful, yet ugly. Yeah, beautiful. There's my first derivative. It's funny that even though this is a more advanced type of um, function, the first derivative took less steps. <laughs> now one more. And this one is a little bit worse, and maybe you can tell me why. 2e to the 7x plus 1. Here we go. I'm going to make it really ugly. Plus 3 squared times... <laughs> 6x plus 5 to the third. Boom. There's a really ugly function. Hey, it happens. Whatever. If you could derive really ugly cases, then you could do basic cases. So I say go hard or go home. <laughs> now this whole thing is my u. This whole thing. This 2e to the 7x plus 1 plus 3 squared. And this whole thing is my v. 6x plus 5 to the third. So this is a very, very advanced type of uh, chain rule case, okay? And if you're confused when I do it here, I want you to go back and review your chain rule with my advanced situations, okay? But we got this. Here we go. It's the first. Copy it down. It's the first. Times the derivative of the second, which is a... Chain rule. Now notice I cover this up so I could just focus here for a second. Find the derivative of this. 3 to the front. Keep my base. Subtract one from the exponent and multiply by the derivative of the inside. That's the chain rule. So I have my first times my derivative of my second plus. Second, copy it down, times my derivative of the first, which is a nice ugly chain rule. Ignore this guy for a second. Bring the 2 to the front. Keep the base. 2e to the 7x plus 1 plus 3. Subtract 1 from the exponent and multiply by the derivative of the inside. And the derivative of this inside is 2 times 7e to the 7x plus 1. Running out of space, guys. There's a bracket there. 
So I'm going to have to like definitely look at this again. It's the first. That looks good. Times the derivative of the second. 3 times 6x plus 5 to the second times 6. That looks good. Plus the second times the derivative of the first, which I definitely need to recheck. Bring the exponent down, right? Bring the 2 to the front. Keep the base, which also has a 2, e to the 7x plus 1 plus 3. Subtract 1 from the exponent and multiply by the derivative of the inside, which is a 2, and then that 7 from that derivative of the exponent, times 7e to the 7x plus 1, plus 0, the derivative of a constant. So let me definitely clean this up a little bit before I do anything else. Here's my first term, and all of this is my second. So what I'm going to do in my first term, the only thing that I see, is this 3 times 6. So I'm going to leave everything else there. 2e to the 7x plus 1 plus 3 squared. 3 times 6 is 18, and then 6x plus 5 squared plus. Over here, I'm going to leave this 6x plus 5 to the third in front and look at stuff in here. All this is being multiplied. Now, this 2, because this is all product, this 2 can be multiplied by this 2 and this 7. So I have a 14 times this 2, which is a 28 e to the 7x plus 1. Right? 2 times 2 times 7 is 28. This e to the 7x plus 1, and then I'm still left with this, times 2e to the 7x plus 1 plus 3. This is an uglier situation, right? So let me show you that one more time. I have this 2 times 7, which is 14, times this 2, which is 28, times e to the 7x plus 1, and I still have this 2e to the 7x plus 1 plus 3, okay? Now, do I have a GCF? I definitely do have a GCF. So here we go. This is my first expression. This is my second. And I'm looking for a greatest common factor amongst those two big things. So this 18 is being multiplied by everything. And this 28 is being multiplied by everything. So 18 and 28 <clears throat> have... They only have a 2 in common, don't they? Yep, take out a 2. What else do these two terms have in common? Well, they both have this 2e to the 7x plus 1 plus 3, right? This one has two of them, and this one has one of them. So I'm only going to take out one of them. And they both also have this 6x plus 5. This one has two of them. This one has three of them, so I'm going to take out two of them. And let's see if I took out my GCF. Let's see what's left. From my first term, I took out a 2 from that 18, so I'm left with a 9. I took out one of these 2e to the 7x plus 1 plus 3s, and I had two of them to begin with, so I need another one of those. I took out two of these 6x plus 5s, and I only had two to start with, so I don't need any more of those. So my first part is done. Plus, this whole second thing. From the 28, I took that 2 out, so I'm left with a 14. I still have this e to the 7x plus 1. I took out one of these 2e to the 7x plus 1 plus 3s. I only had one to begin with, so I don't need another. And I took two of these 6x plus 5s out, and I had three to begin with in this one, so I need another one of those. Right? So I always double check if I distribute it back through, is it the same thing that I had? Well, 2 times 9 is 18. This time itself is two of them. And then I have two of these. 2 times 14 is 28. I have this here. One of these, one of these. And two of these out, one of these in to get that three of them. 
Then we'll take a look and see if we can simplify any more. The only thing that we can do is distribute, distribute and see if there are any like terms. If not, then we're done. Well, all this stuff is going to stay the same. 2 times 2e to the 7x plus 1 plus 3 times 6x plus 5 squared. That stays. I'm going to distribute this 9. 9 times 2 is 18e to the 7x plus 1. 9 times 3 is 27. Plus, distribute this whole thing here. I'm going to cheat and say 14 times 6. 14 times 6. Here, distribute it is 84. Don't forget this x. x e to the 7 x plus 1. 14 e to the 7 x plus 1 times 5 is plus 70 <laughs> e to the 7 x plus 1. Close brackets. Okay, so I distributed here. Let's double check it. Distributed here. 14 times 6 is 84x, e to the 7x plus 1, and then 5 times 14 is 7, e to the 7x plus 1. Do I have like terms? I think that I do. We're getting there, guys. We're getting there. Patience. All this in the beginning is still just the same. Boom, boom. Copy it down. Not changing. Here. I'm going to start with this guy because it's a term that has an x in it. And no other term has an x in it, do they? So he's by himself. 84xe to the 7x plus 1. But this 18e to the 7x plus 1 plus 70e to the 7x plus 1, they're like terms. Right? I have 18 of them and I'm adding 70 of them. So I'm going to get 88 of them. Notice that these are not like terms. This one has an x and this one does not. All that's left is that 27. Hmm. And then we see if these have anything in common, which it does not look like they do. So thank the Lord. Here we go. This is our final case. Remember I said I'm going to get more and more complicated. So this is a beautiful example to practice because if you could do this, you could do any other examples. Because not only do we have chain rules, we have product rules, we have the, the derivative of an exponential function, we have all kinds of stuff in this one problem, taking out an advanced GCF. So if you could do this one, you could do anything else. The only thing is just be careful. Keep your work nice and neat. You know, I like to work vertically rather than, you know, from here and to here horizontally so that I can see and follow my work if I need to check and if I made a mistake I could backtrack. So keep your work nice and neat, okay, one thing at a time. If you have a lot going on, try not to do too much stuff in your head, write it down and good luck. Again, let me know if you guys need help, if you need any other examples. Um, let's write this down again. Help me professorj.com or at gmail.com. You can email me. You can check out my website. Comment there. Comment underneath this video. If you guys need other examples, then let me know. All right? Give me some feedback. Till next time.